Hi everybody. Welcome to Dandelion Cottage. Today is Watercolor Wednesday and I'm Leslie Watkins. Thank you for joining me. So I was out in the garden this morning picking flowers before the rain because it, it looks like it's gonna let loose any moment now. It's uh, it's uh, got some storms in the forecast so I wanted to get the flowers before they got wet or damaged and this is what we have today so I've got this beautiful bouquet and it has the William Baffin climbing roses it's got some helianthus and some mollus and I also have lavender which I'm very excited about because um, lavender doesn't do especially well here in, in this sort of cold and wet climate, but I have a, a spot where it's rocky and has good drainage and it gets a lot of heat and sun. And so once in a while I get a nice little harvest and, and this year looks like it's a pretty good one. So there is our subject. Get that in the camera for you. There you go. And, um, and what I'm thinking of doing is I want to create an all-over design. So I'm using a, a fairly large piece of watercolor paper. It's a one-eighth of a sheet. And, um, and I'm going to be working slightly wet and wet, not, not really wet and wet. I want it to dry sufficiently so I can get a little detail in before I finish the video. And I'm just using three colors red, yellow, and blue, and I have my nice sable brush here. Okay, so let's get started. Here we go. And I also want to mention that um, there's still time to register for my online watercolor classes this month, and this is the beginning of a new series. So I'm going to begin with just the basics. So this is a great way to get started if you haven't done any watercolor before or um, a quick review for those of you who have a little experience. So if you're interested in learning more, please go to dandeliancottagedesign.com and subscribe to notes and that will get you on my mailing list so I can send you my monthly class listings and the information that you need to know to register. So please do that. Okay, so I'm just, I'm going to give it a little bit of a spritz. Not too much. And off camera here, I have my, I have my three colors. So I have them in a tray. It looks like this. And I'm and I'm going to begin by mixing up some puddles of paint. So I've got plenty of uh, wet color ready to go to use. So there's my yellow my red. I think you can see a little bit of that in the corner of the of the screen there. And my blue. Looks like I'm running low on blue. I'm going to I'm going to squeeze out a little little more blue. Let me go get that. Okay, so while I'm while I'm doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and put out some fresh yellow. There we go. When you when you squeeze out your paints, don't be stingy. Make sure that you've got plenty, because if you're too stingy and you just squeeze out a tiny little dot of paint it's going to show in your paintings. 
So you want to make sure that you've got plenty of paint. You're not afraid to use it. And you're just ready to go. So, um, so here you can see I've got plenty of paint squeezed out there. So if I put my finger here, you can see it's about the size of a quarter or so, and it's, and it's high. All right, here we go. So let's, I'm going to start with some of my lightest colors first. So I'm going to take some of that yellow, and I'm just going to start with pure color just to get started. So I'll drop some color right onto the surface of the paper and I'm not worried I'm not worried about drawing at all I just want to get the color in the places that I want it to be approximately okay the the art police aren't going to come and get you if you change things around so Feel free to move things. It's your design. Now I can see my paper is already starting to dry a little. I may have to give it another spritz, but let's just see. Let's just see how it behaves. So, you know, every, every day, I think this is where a lot of people have trouble when they start painting with watercolor is that the the humidity in the air and your climate has a lot to do with the way the paint behaves from day to day so it changes so the the way you you learn to account for that is just by practice you just keep working away at it, and after a while, you, you begin to get a, uh, a pretty good sense of, of how the paper is going to absorb on any given day, how, the, how quickly the paint's going to dry. Now, for these um, little sprays of alchemia, which is a wonderful plant to have in the garden, it's named for the um, ancient alchemists that were attempting to turn mercury into gold. And if you've ever noticed the way mercury, liquid metal, rolls around in the in the palm of your hand not that you'd want to do that it's very poisonous but it does roll around and and it, it retains its its little um ball shape like droplets it's very interesting and the um botanists named this plant alchemia mollis for the alchemists because when the raindrops collect on the fuzzy leaves of the plant, it balls up and it rolls around the way mercury does. So you can, you can look that up on, um, on Google. It's very beautiful. Right, I'm just softening some of these edges a little bit on that because the, the texture is very soft. And um, the other thing is I don't want to overmix my colors. So I'm letting, I'm letting the, the colors kind of mingle on the page on their own. Now let's get some of that lavender established. So a little bit of the red and the blue. And I'm just going to drop that in here and there. Let me check my settings here. Here we go. Just want to make sure I'm live. Oh, 
Okay, so so there there is the beginning of a very loose and colorful picture. All right, so it, it's just taken me a couple of minutes to do this. So maybe 10 minutes or so or less. And just as is, this would make a very nice decorative paper for, for some of your projects. I have a I have a special project in mind for this for this one. All right, and and so now what I want to do so that that's kind of the way the colors are arranged in the actual bouquet, but now for the sake of my design, I also want to add more color in different places just to to balance it out. All right, remember you're not you're not copying what you see, you're interpreting it and your job is to design. So make it the way you want it to be and then use use your specimen in this case, you know, the roses and so forth to um be your reference and to inspire you. Okay, I'm I'm pretty happy with that right now. A little more green in the middle here. That's a little blue. Let's get some more yellow on there. There we go. I think we'll add a few more leaves while we're at it. All right, so now I think it's time to begin to add my middle tones. So these uh, these colors, these values that I have down on the on the page right now, are are just light tones. We can get a lot darker, but I always advise my students to go lightly longer. That way, if you need to make any corrections as you go, you can. And it gives you a chance to stand back from your work and, and take a look at it and see what you might want to do before you commit to anything too much. All right, so let's get, let's get some of these beautiful, rich tones in these roses. So here's pure, pure red here. And I'm just dropping that in. And you can see the you can see the paint as it moves, and it makes this beautiful, soft quality. And that's what I'm looking for. This is this is the beauty of watercolor. Is the uh, just allowing the the pigment to intermingle and mix with the surrounding colors. All right now, let's take a little more of this green. I'm just I'm just dropping the stronger mixture into the into the wet leaves before they've had a chance to dry the um the timing that you add that you use to add pigment to your picture is very very important and as I said earlier, that is going to depend largely on how the paint and, and paper is behaving, behaving in any given moment. So you, you have to just keep an eye on things and see how it's, how it's doing. 
Now these beautiful sunflowers, helianthus, helio for the sun, I'm just going to see, I'm just going to put some of the centers in and just sort of test and see how fast the, the paint is moving. So I can see that it's still plenty wet, so I'm not going to be able to get a lot of detail in the petals and so forth right now. So I'm just going to leave that alone, just make these a tiny bit darker. I'm going to use a little violet. It's a little too red there. Drop some violet. There we go. There we go. All right. I'm going to tackle the, the lavender next. So I'm mixing up a little more lavender. And this is very dark and my brush is very wet. So what I'm going to do is I have a, a <clears throat> excuse me, a damp sponge off to the side of the screen. And I'm using that to blot off the excess moisture in my brush because I, I want to try to keep this from running too fast because I want to get the, those little buds that texture of the lavender flowers. There we go. So just uh, play with, spend time playing. You know, you don't, you don't even have to be making any kind of picture in particular, but just just play with the paint and see how it moves. Experiment with your your color mixtures, and save all the all the sheets of, of paper that you use, even if even if it's not something that you would hang on the wall or um, frame. You can, you can still cut them up and make bookmarks and boxes and line note cards. Nothing goes to waste. And then uh, you can always turn it over and work on the other side. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with the way this is evolving. And what I want to do is make, I want to, I want to, I'm going to clean my palette a little bit over near the yellow. And I'm going to make some of this pale yellow green, kind of a chartreuse color that the, Alchemia is so mostly yellow with a with a drop of blue, and then what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to add some water to that, so it's a very runny mixture, and to I want to I want to spatter these little around the edges of these sprays of Alchemia and sort of get the impression. of that of that fine texture so on the edges of the paper it's where it's drying first the spatter is is holding its shape And then, of course, in the in the wet areas, it's getting softer. Okay, that's a start. 
And I think while I'm at it, I think I'll add a little bit of the violet mixture and do the same thing just as a, a complementary color. And add a little of that here and there because the the lavender also has a very fine texture as well. So I think that this will help to enhance the effect. Okay, don't want to overdo. Now I'm going to take a very dark mixture. This is the red and the blue. And I'm going to begin to add some dark accents. So I think you can you can see now you may have thought when I started that the color the colors were dark enough but very often times people do not use the full strength of of watercolor and they get these very soft kind of pastel-y effects which are which are nice and sometimes you may want that but you're not using your full toolbox if you don't use all your values. I'm just adding some little random kind of lavender shapes here and there. Gosh, the birds this morning were just going to town. The bird song here this year has been absolutely spectacular. I can't identify all of them, but I can certainly tell that there's a lot of new visitors to Dandelion Cottage's gardens this year. It's very exciting. <clears throat> this is the time of year when they're when their chicks have fledged so they can make a little more noise when the when the babies are still in the nests they tend to go quiet they don't want to attract attention to their vulnerable babies but now they're going going to town and loved it i was up at at 5:45 this morning because they woke me up. There were there was so much bird song. Okay, so I think we're good with the violet. I'm going to go back to my red and see if I can get that a little bit richer. Still plenty wet, so I'm not going to be able to uh, do much drawing on this one. Okay, so I think the uh, last thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to sip a tea. I'm going to try to, <clears throat> I'm going to try to put a little more detail in my helianthus. So I'm making a um, 
kind of a yellow ochre mix with <clears throat> mostly mostly yellow, a little red, <clears throat> a tiny bit of blue. Let's see if we let's see if we can get any a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that, and maybe just make the center of the flowers a tiny bit darker. So if, um, if you're interested in the beginning watercolor class this month, you're going to have to sign up soon because registration is going to close shortly. And what I'm going to be doing is reviewing your setup your basic materials, some fundamentals of, of beginning painting, and, um, and I think that you'll find it very valuable information that will, that will help you as you continue on your, your watercolor journey. So I urge you to get in now with the, with the beginning class the follow-up classes will continue for another six weeks. Okay. Well, I think that about does it. Maybe just one last thing. Put some, a little bit of the, um, indicate some of the centers of the roses where the, where the pollen is. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Here's that address again, dandeliancottagedesign.com. Go under the tab for notes and subscribe, and I will share with you the information you need to find out more about the upcoming classes. Have a great day, stay creative, stay well, and I'll see you next time.